in the the spirit of full transparency. No, I got it. <laughs> um, all right, well, I just started recording this. Okay. Good. I got all my demons exercised before the recording started. <laughs> So he this this he already knows. So I guess I can just like while we're waiting. Yeah, he, he was like more intent to focus on like the software side of things too. Like I think he was very interested in Unity and um, trying to get, I guess, more familiar with that. So I know that was one of his major objectives to start looking into that. That's um, cool. I, then, I I sort of like the idea of someone just diving into that. Uh, yeah. I'd only support it if someone was interested in it. So, yeah, he. I mean, it's interesting to me too. So I'll definitely yeah. be curious to learn from what he learns. But um, just for like a divide and conquer, yeah, strategy, well, that makes a lot of sense. That, that that one will be more in his court, and then I think uh, I've been sort of sort of brainstorming and and working on the approach to like the diagramming of our our. Uh, urban typology and the taxonomy that'll eventually be more polished from that um so those are i guess kind of our our overall um orientation uh at least for right now i'll okay. i'm gonna text him and see what he what's he, he's up to um All right, I just sent uh, uh, where you at to. <laughs> okay. um, so I tried screen recording my usage of that, like uh, the AR thing for the March Madness, and I couldn't, the, like the screen recording app that I was trying to use kept like crashing my phone. But I still want to try and like show people that because I think it's really, it's like a cool everyday um usage that i feel like i don't know how many billions of people watch march madness but it's cool that they're making an effort to uh yeah. to get that out there oh he responded so i think he's coming okay cool okay well while he's getting on i might as well one of us will probably have to share so i'll probably just get the mural up Whoops. Oh, I see him. <laughs> He's the man behind the curtain. <laughs> so what is, uh, you're recording this, right? Yeah. So he'll be able to see it. What What's the, do you, do you have any um, more specific ideas about what the presentation schedule will look like for this coming week? So, uh, yeah, I need, the one thing I need to do is outline what I'm looking for. I've kind of vaguely described it and it won't get, it won't be like, I'm going to ask for specific deliverables, but I want to frame it in a way that makes sense to you guys so you can work towards yeah. it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, what I, I think what I'm going to plan to do is actually break the review into three days and have three groups and ask that you participate in the group that you're in on that day. Okay. And, and so it'll be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and it'll probably be something like, because I'm talking to you guys today, I'll probably have you guys go like Wednesday or Thursday. And then uh, I think the reviews will be, each will be two hours. And then I'll have like kind of bonus time at the end to talk to anybody that um, feels like they need additional direction or wants an additional conversation. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So Monday, Wednesday, um, and Thursday. Yeah. What's up, Austin? Hey, how's it going? Yo, hey, Austin. Good. So we didn't really do much yet. We I just uh, started screen sharing and Mike's recording this, so... 
I just asked him about the schedule for this week, but okay. um, I got to run it like 1130. So is it cool if I just like sort of briefly recap what I've been working on? And then if, if we have to go or if you guys go longer, then I can just catch up on the recording. Yep. Um, okay. So um, I, I explained a little bit to Mike about that you were looking into the Unity software or however we can start like prototyping it and sort of that half of the this assignment and I was looking at how to specifically like diagram and illustrate the relationship between typologies and and show that Flint is like one of many examples so um, this is I, I sort of riffed on like a couple of key topics in a in a draft of like this next version of the discourse um, for things that were uh, important to both my my old project and Austin's old project and how they sort of come together in this stage um, so I don't know if it's on the case studies uh, mural board if, if you want to read it in depth but I won't like specifically read it unless you want me yeah, to no, no no I just I just I really quickly read through it it sounds good okay I'll have comments, but like, I, I, I mean, it's like, actually the brevity is good. Like the way it's structured, it actually feels very really clear. Okay, cool. So that's that's cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I sort of left the decentralization one for now. Cause I think Austin and I, if, if I write that, we'll have to end up having a larger conversation about what goes into it. Yeah. But that was more what I think his project was about. Um, so I, I, I'm not going to say that I won't contribute to that one, but that's why it's blank for now. Um, and so these uh, work in progress diagrams, I probably should have ordered these differently, but I started by like sketching out, um, I guess just sort of a very, very simple uh, progression from how like infrastructurally thinking about water, how cities and then suburbs get their water typically. And so this is like a large city metro uh, typology evolution and again like a very very simple probably overly abstracted version of it um, but it'll like I have more more layering to do on it and that it's sourced in like a local river or lake uh, and then goes through a filtration plant and process and then that supplies like the major cities which then supplies uh, each municipality um, and that like how basically how the, the trickle down effect happens in a typical scenario and then the Flint scenario where they like switch to a smaller water source that was closer to their community um, and then we talk about in the discourse the detriment of that and why things happened the way they did a little bit um, and then in a like a, a city that has to transport water from uh, from a plant or a filtration facility somewhere that's isolated from its primary water source. And that was sort of a nod to what was happening in California too, where they're like running out of fresh water. I didn't know that. Um, that's well, interesting. That, yeah. that's, that's one of, uh, one of a few different approaches, but that's, yeah. that's how it, how it manifested in, in this diagramming sequence um, that's super i know i had no idea i mean like as a paradigm of like infrastructural challenges it represents a very clear one that i didn't think yeah of. that's good yeah they they're also i don't know if this might have been mentioned in this class before but i know they're trying to basically like drain the colorado river dry of fresh water i knew that yeah california is like in in a they're sort of between a rock and a hard place right yeah. now in terms of their water infrastructure um, so that I know that's maybe oversimplistic at this point. I, I still have to put some more work into it, but I also wanted wanted to uh, clean them up a little bit in terms of like a graphic approach and just make it easily understandable to non-professionals. Um, so I, there will be keys and more more development, and I I would assume some input from Austin if he has a preference on how these are carried out, but. I also thought it might be helpful to have like a, a word uh, taxonomy that where I could either uh, make opaque or trans more transparent certain words in terms of a typology that uh, the diagram is talking about. So this would be like 
the beginning of one diagram that it gets applied to a multitude of, of urban typologies. I wasn't sure if that's a good way to go or not. So I like got probably a third of the way through or probably not even that far, but um, I, I just thought it maybe it would be a good balance and like a connector between the um, the discourse and the visual visual aids to like connect that with a word diagram as well. Um, but that's that's as far as I've gotten. I've been pretty pretty busy with my other class to be honest. But I'm planning to like really hammer it out for the rest of the weekend after two o'clock. <laughs> Um, but I guess if either of you have comments or thoughts, cause this is the first time that I think Austin will have I seen see, this yeah. as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I like those diagrams at the end. Um, would we be doing something like that for like each of the different aspects affecting the city? Yeah. Like, I, I know this one's for like water, but. Yeah, I think that that was my thought and I know it uh, would be helpful probably to see like electricity and other um, other aspects of a city's infrastructure as well. So this is kind of like a, if, if uh, as the prototype is to the client envisioning like the game scenario, this is to you guys envisioning the deliverable <laughs> scenario. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like a, an overview of what I intend to do. Um, well, I sort of think you guys together need to uh, design this parallel city still. Like, what is it three-dimensionally? And it doesn't have to be an entire city. Maybe it's like four blocks. But I sort of feel like it needs to be three-dimensional in the way that Austin had modeled his uh, community. Um, I think... So I sort of think that's maybe, I mean, one of you guys can take that on, but it, maybe it's a sketch you guys kind of shred out this afternoon or tomorrow, what that is. And I think getting that modeled, and, and maybe, maybe I'm perceiving this incorrectly, but I think getting that model will be an important set or next step in terms of building the context. And then all the diagrams and descriptions of what's going on diagrammatically can be generated from that model, if that makes sense. Okay. Like you can you can do two, to, but I think it would it would be in reference to that model, and I think it and I think it's important to three dimensionalize and spatialize you know make spatial this parallel city environment, and it's sort of like it's simultaneously a really hard thing to do and a really easy thing to do because you're kind of inventing it, but that's what makes it hard as well. Yeah, I think I sort of think like. But uh, one step would be just a diagram really simply, um, let's see if we can, like, uh, actually you could do a kind of like core, let's see, let's see if I can even do this, a kind of like core periphery and then really rural kind of landscape. Oh yeah. Uh, and maybe it doesn't have to be concentric rings like that, but it could be like, or suburb rural like this that's core okay. that's suburb and that's rural. and maybe maybe it just ends up being this but it's taking your diagrams and making them well, think about the new plan, actually. Yeah, this is pretty much like a plan of the sections, right? Right, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then, you know, then this is like a three-dimensional kind of model that, you know, one of you guys is building, or you're building together, or maybe Austin's just taking it on, or you're, or you're taking it on, Trevor, I'm not sure. Yeah. You kind of want to sketch it out together, and then um, you essentially assemble this city according to the logics of these, these types of urban fabric. Right. That, I think that that's a good move. That makes sense to do. Yeah. Um, and then work from, I guess maybe that's why I had these was to like ground that fictional model in like non, non fictional uh, case studies or not case studies necessarily, but like typologies, but yeah. 
Yeah. It, I think we've done like enough research of real world uh, implementations of it where I feel like we kind of have the the latitude to start just making it and it, it's backed by all the things that we've looked at yeah. so far. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like at this point, you're able to, this is why it's easy, because you're able to intuit right. everything that you've researched into this this landscape that you're constructing. It's not like you're starting from yeah. fresh or from scratch. Right. That's, um, you can just grab right. pieces of uh, urban fabrics that you guys have, have researched and make a city environment off of that. Yeah. Okay, I mean that that makes sense, Austin. I can I can meet like after three thirty this afternoon if you want to like specifically go through what that model looks like. Okay. Um, I don't know if you, uh, I didn't really give you the floor until now. Do you have like anything that you want to, to highlight while I'm still here? <laughs> um, I can stop sharing if you if it's easier. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, I've been going through actually. Did we lose him? Oh, we lost him. Uh oh. But I see his mouse. Who's moving around? I'm I'm moving around. Oh, okay. I can here, let me uh I can follow him. Huh. So whatever he's doing, then you can just look at That's cool. For, you know, figure out how this works. <laughs> <laughs> except for it's not gonna make much sense if he doesn't know that yeah. he's not live. <laughs> <laughs> oh there we go he's back yeah <laughs> sorry my computer shut off no you're good I know, it happened yesterday just, i can't remember someone just like disappeared um <laughs> so yeah, i just followed your mouse on the mural so if you move around and stuff then you have the floor essentially okay cool um yeah, so I've been looking at actually the Unreal Engine. I'm not sure how that compares to the Unity, um, but that's the one that I looked at and I thought that it looked um, better personally. Okay. Um, so my impression is that Unreal is a little more sympathetic towards in integrating SketchUp. I okay. haven't, I've, I've used Unreal a little bit. I've imported SketchUp models. It's pretty easy. Um, I played around with the effects and such. So I know it does work. Yeah, I looked it up and it's the newest versions that are able to incorporate SketchUp models. So right. that's why I was looking at it originally. Yeah. Um, Have you downloaded it and opened yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I downloaded it. I was just like playing around with it a little bit. I don't have anything saved right now. No, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was just trying to understand like how it works and all that. Um, so basically what I was thinking with it was making like some kind of top down, um, maybe axon view. Um, that would be like a management style game, like the block hood, um, or kind of like a puzzle in a way where like you're combining these different components of the city and you can place them wherever based on this grid system that's incorporated on the landscape. Um, I think, yeah, I think that makes sense. I think that what will be kind of key in addition, if you guys can still see my screen. So like when you model the context or, or design your hypothetical city, you'll also, this is my impression, tell me what you guys think, that you'll also have to design a kind of centralized infrastructure because what the game, I see, sort of see the game is responding to the, a breakdown in that infrastructure. So you'll design that infrastructure. It's super simple, right? Well, it's not super simple, but it's like a diagram. And then you mm -hmm. sort of like the game starts with a breakdown of the infrastructure. It's not working. And okay. so what you're diagramming, Trevor, in some ways are provisional like solutions to that breakdown of the infrastructure. And that's where the off grid comes into play. Like you have this context that you're, you're designing and it's breaking down. And so you sort of need that. And then the interaction is in like negotiating these challenges at a system wide level. Um, and so I think what you're describing, uh, Austin totally could work. Sounds cool. I think the thing 
And this is, you know, where there's a kind of difference between what you're prototyping and what the game design is, because the complexity of this could get, you know, pretty sophisticated real quick. But like, yeah. I sort of think like the part of the design of the, I'll call it participatory system or the game is that, you know, you're working with other people, for instance, maybe it's an idea of being multiplayer. And that's like part of that is like, and maybe both players might, they might have slightly different agendas because they represent different aspects of the city. You guys can hypothetically think about that. I'm not, I don't expect that you're able to like program that into a game. Um, but I don't want to, the, your ability to execute kind of coding and programming and Unreal to limit how you think of the game environment. Okay. So it's a little bit of like, you know, you push hard as you can. Let's say you take on Unreal Austin, you push hard as you can in Unreal. I'm not mm -hmm. expecting you to be able to program people interacting in Unreal. But if you're able to push it to a level where you use it as representation of an idea, then um, that that's a pretty am, that's an ambitious and worthwhile goal for the development okay. of the project. I guess I don't need to keep this up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how like yes, how long you, you guys get the diagram. It's pretty simple. <laughs> suburb rule, rural. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I was thinking, I'm just typing this out like as a reaction to what you were saying. Maybe like the lenses of these different players could be like the politician, the economist, yeah. the community yep. representative, the uh, like the average citizen. And they all like have a, a design like storyboarded approach that Austin's working on. Probably won't be all four of them because like you said, that would be a yeah, that would be where we input a software engineer to help us develop yeah, that. But, exactly, exactly. Um, I kind of, I kind of like that. Like looking, looking at these as like a to have the perspective of one of those people. So I feel like I, I just wanted to say that I'm typing this out to as a point for us to go over later of what these players might be. Um, and this is this is reflected too in the discourse already. I like said some stuff about the the factors basically that influence and those factors are rooted in different professions of a of people within a city or community yeah i like that so like my my kind of point of saying that in in, in regards to the kind of axonometric conception that you were talking or discussing austin mm -hmm. is that i think i think it is important to have to incorporate the perspective of the individual whoever they are along with this kind of top-down view Okay. Because part of, I would say, the ambition of this studio and the way that kind of I would argue urban planning should be approached is that it's not simply a top-down approach, that it is it uses the tools of top-down, the top down like a perspective from the top, but uh prioritizes the perspective of individuals and their ability to negotiate and build semi-consensus around addressing issues. So I think that like looking at it from an axon view is totally legit and cool, but combining that with how people see the city and how they experience it, and then their own ability to negotiate those breakdowns is probably central to how the game is operated. So it's not like this kind of god godlike interface where you have like all the tools at your disposal and you're just yeah, like yeah. that, that, that <laughs> solved. <laughs> Like the, the challenge is as political as it is technological and it's maybe more political than it is technological because from a tech and that's where the breakdown in like this, you know, the countercultural kind of romance and idealism of systems thinking broke down. It's when it, when it had to confront the realities, the existing realities of the city and had to remain in the city instead of being removed from the city, the, the ability to kind of produce uh, compromised, uh, incremental, non-ideal solutions uh, became a breaking point for that idealism. And so I think part of it is like the game is like negotiating those different perspectives. The perspectives are like not only the politician, the citizen, the economist. I like those breakdowns because they, they have 
different sets of knowledge and skills, but they also have different um, levels of idealism versus pragmatism. And so, um, and even in some ways, it's not even like um, a breakdown of skill set. It's a breakdown of how one, like almost like character personality types, like the pragmatist, like the pragmatist is very direct versus the idealist. So they're kind of romantic in terms of the big idea of, you know, off like the entire city being off grid. And so there's a lot of ways to organize how you think these different perspectives come into play. Yeah, that all makes sense. Hey, Mike, I have a kind of a random question, I guess. Do the recordings, when you're recording it on Zoom, does it say what marking point it's at? Like what timing? Oh, I don't know. So what I have to do, we got a stir, all the faculty got a stern email about, before you could just save the Zoom recordings to the Zoom cloud, which was really nice and easy. But apparently they have, we have very limited storage space. So I have to <laughs> save it on my computer and then upload it to YouTube. Oh, okay. So I was I just think, wondering, cause like sometimes I like to write down what, what the time is that you said something so yeah. that I can go back to that point specifically. I, see. I just didn't know if it had like a runtime of the recording. I do know when a zoom, when you save to the zoom cloud, it like saves your notes or it gives you notes too. Whoop, don't do that. Click something. So that was me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but something happens, like I get a zoom folder on my computer and it saves like a text file. That's what goes on. Oh, uh, okay. And it has like whatever conversation, this, this doesn't answer your question, but it does, it does give you like the set of information. Okay. It's sort of interesting, but then you have to like convert the file. It's kind of a pain actually. <laughs> so I'm always delayed. Like yesterday I had, I talked to three or four people and I have to process the video and I'm uploading to YouTube right now. So it's, <laughs> and I'll do the same thing after we're done talking. So they've transferred the burden to the professor from the exactly <laughs> exactly non liability <laughs> yeah right approach. all right well I gotta dip out and finish my professional practice stuff but I'll uh, I'll try to catch the highlights afterward from this okay. point on sorry if this is disruptive but um, Austin are you cool to meet like sometime later today do you have any availability yeah I can okay. Just let me know, man. I'll text you when I'm out of the storm of pro prac. Okay. <laughs> See you guys later. See Thank you, you Mike. Yeah, so I guess I was just going to start working on creating these um, components of the city. Yeah. That we've been laying out um, or researching, like, what's in this idealized city. Yeah. Um, but I like the idea of um, designing how a centralized city would be originally and showing how that breakdown occurs and how these different uh, players have to, I guess, resolve these issues. Um, yeah. I think, no, that makes sense. I would I would think of it as a map. I think you should guys should both diagram, or you can diagram now and just review with Trevor. Um, okay. I would keep it at a manageable scale or manageable scale, so like a little bigger, maybe twice as big as the area that you already had modeled. Okay. I'm just, and I'm just like that's just my intuition. I'm not basing it off of you know like sort of like what makes sense in terms of scale. Um, as a starting point, I feel like twice as big as what you have will be enough kind of urban material to produce the complexity that you need without being overwhelming. Okay. And I, I, I sort of think, I mean, if you think of like how SimCity works as a structure, it's like there are no explicit boundaries. The thing grows over time, right? Mm -hmm. There's just like territory that's like yeah. unsettled. And so you could think of it that way too, like recognizing that cities grow over time. So what you're just starting with is an existing kind of, composition or collage of different urban scenarios. Okay. It's sort of interesting because then it becomes a kind of tool of also, there'll be something in the way you're approaching this, this is, that's implicit about like creating a tool of urban design and urban planning. 
there's a little bit of that, you know, like these yeah. things are linked, like thinking of des infrastructure design and infrastructure, addressing infrastructure issues is directly connected to urban planning, and urban design, which will be a kind of like positive benefit to the way you design this process for you guys. It'll be a kind of like urban planning design tool, which is cool that prioritizes infrastructural crises. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so right now it's just been the learning curve of learning the software. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to try to start modeling these things today. So, do you, them. yeah, I, I think it may, I mean, I would, I think that's a good idea. I would develop a kind of test workflow for yourself, yeah. like model things in SketchUp. I don't think you can link things like a SketchUp file to Unreal, I'm not sure. So you, it may be just a kind of like importing workflow and then you have to kind of delete things in Unreal. when you, you Yeah, don't I think you have to save it as like the specific file type um, when you're exporting that is compatible with the Unreal Engine. Okay. And then it opens as like a folder in the program. And then you can like drag and drop from there. Okay. That's what I got from it so far. Yeah, no, that's right. You're right. Um, so yeah, I'd work on developing a workflow. I would just start modeling the city now. Like you guys, you don't necessarily need to overthink it in the sense that like the design of the city won't change as the, your, your kind of game system evolves. But I think you need something three dimensional and spatial to okay. respond to. Yep. Uh, have you used unity at all i haven't really used unity okay. i was just wondering I, I've, how, I've, okay. I've read about it and apparently it's supposed to be more user friendly than unreal so okay i found that i was able to use unreal pretty easily i mean with like a lot of youtube searching Mm -hmm. And I have found with Unreal, there's a lot, there's a big community of like support. So when I've encountered issues, I've been pretty easily able to just research it okay. through Google, which is, a, you know, that's sort of reassuring mm -hmm. that there's a, there's a pretty big community. I mean, it's gaming community, so they're online, yeah, yeah. they're accessible, and you can post questions even to a place like, like some, I'm, I'm assuming you can do this. I've done things like this in the past to like a chat board or a forum regarding issues on specific types of software. Okay. Yeah, other than that, I don't think I have anything else. Any okay. other questions? No, that sounds good. I would just, for this, so what I was telling Trevor is that the review next week will be broken. And I'll just have three groups and one group per day. Okay. Monday, it'll be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Because I'm talking to you guys today, I'll probably have you go Wednesday unless you guys want to go Monday. Okay. Um, and then I would say the goal for that, amongst other things, would be to have this city space modeled um, and the kind of diagrammatic infrastructure laid out. And then a kind of a series of diagrams to talk about how you envision the process of participation taking place and maybe it's sketches of what you think the kind of interface of the software would look like or the program or the process would look like. Mm -hmm. Getting that storyboarded out for next Wednesday would be a good goal. Okay. All right. All right, cool. Thanks for meeting. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you, Austin. Yep, see ya. All right, good luck. And Thank if you, you guys have, like, if you're coming up with diagrams and you have questions, just post to Slack. Okay. And I'll, I can respond to things. Yeah, I think we just need to, uh, make the flat 2D drawings that Trevor was doing into three dimensions. Exactly. To yeah. be able to see it from a better perspective. Um, but yeah, we'll work on those. Okay, cool. All right. All right. See I'll ya. see you. Thank you. Yep.
What's going on, Mike? Not much. Just doing my uh, doing my thing. Oh, doing a thing. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, I happened to stumble upon like, uh, well, first of all, um, I was thinking about I want to talk about the game prototype and what is it. First of all, what is the game in itself, the concept, and second of all, like which uh, game prototype strategy is best, like which tool is best. Um, personally, I've experienced with VR uh, um, last uh, two semesters ago in the interior design studio. We designed a uh, space, we designed materials, and we were in there, and we were able to essentially create this 360 views and look around. Other than that, um, I'm did you did you like did you did you like the uh, using the tool? Did you think it was worthwhile? Do you think it's interesting and valuable? Yeah, I have I have my own like uh, what is that? Google card box or whatever okay um it's not as sophisticated as what i had uh, for, uh provided by the professor jen it was cool not until i um came across augmented reality where uh his um there's a project it's um a case study that i'm using it's called good good um and essentially it's almost like pokemon go in a way right and um, it essentially um, has this companion alongside of you that acts as a guide or in a way like uh, an animated character that helps you out in a way. So with social experiences, following up on your stuff. Anyway, um, I think that is a lot more feasible or no, no, that is a lot more e I don't want to say easier, but it's more understandable than um, um, how to deal with VR. I want to say uh, settings because um, with VR and my my game that I want to go for is called Nomi. It's essentially almost like a Facebook, or it's so. I got this idea of Nomi and. It's, um, yeah, why don't you talk to me about the, like the game before you talk about the prototype? Because I think yeah. you're about to do that, but I just want to be clear about that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I just wanted to let you know that I was thinking about the, the options that I'm familiar and would I also see. be yeah. interested no, in I appreciate getting that. into. But yeah, let me get into the game and what I actually uh, I'm looking forward to. So um, you're assigning clip says you don't want a design project you don't want something specific where I sp proscribe a solution a specific solution to a specific instance and that's right um, no no as in like sorry that's interesting that you're giving us that freedom um, so it's almost like a research thing that you're pushing us to do yeah so I well, maybe I would add one thing that the the what you're designing is a process of engagement that can result in, in some ways should result into a response or a solution. A solution is not a good word, but a spatial response that allows others to construct that spatial response. Or a pro problem. What do you mean by, what do you mean by problem? Allow I others mean, to construct a problem? No, no, but, um, what would you, th why would you think that engaging or let's say like I create an instance of um, uh, all the retu re uh, returning uh, re-entry programs connecting and um, uh, all the incarcerated, uh, I want to say, uh, who are currently incarcerated gets also on the conversation and almost like everyone who has to do with this or deals with this is on the same page and instead of everybody essentially discon getting disconnected and miscommunicating because ev everybody have their own political agenda or their own specific, I want to say biases or, or justice. Yeah. And so like 
creating this engagement system or, or sorry, like you called it as public engagement. Um, yeah. I don't think it's a, like it, maybe it's public, but it doesn't mean that, that for an example, like bringing all of these people or uh, constituencies in this instance, um, on the same table because, um, there is like a friction between re-entry programs as if they're like businesses and they all want to profit and they this one doesn't want to support this one and they don't want to collaborate and everybody is literally reinventing the wheel. Um, I, I heard the same idea of how they want to improve from four different organizations and they don't know that the others are even like in that realm. And um, uh, once you start talking to them about it, they almost turn a blind eye on it or they start saying like disqualifying the other for like um i don't know what other reasons it is like for an example like uh returning uh, detroit's returning citizen task force right created two years ago right that is not i want to say like the first program in michigan or D D in detroit and I focus only in Detroit because that's where I wanted to do my research. Um, they did not want to work with, um, uh, let's say, uh, Goodwill or Flip the Script, even though Flip the Script had 14 years to 12 years of experience. Flip the Script also doesn't want to collaborate with the DRC, uh, Detroit Returning uh, Reentry. I don't know, like for citizens. And so yeah. like, there's like this disconnect between all of these people. And um, I was wondering why. And like, what's funny is that everyone wants to do good, but for their own good and not really for the people who is essentially their job. Like that's who they're essentially like walking, wor wor working for. Now, I want to say directly working for, but that's what I felt is that why isn't there like this sort of like harmony between A, B, and C? How do I create harmony between A, B, and C? And honestly, this is, this is what I've, uh, I want to say like establish is that um, after going through returning citizens, uh, I want to say like typologies and their reintegration process to community uh, and the constraints that each type of returning citizens encounters, by the way, all of which will be in the atlas that I haven't submitted yet. Um, um, I wanted to have this sort of um, uh, an atlas of the different types of returning citizens, um, the, their aspiration, their current situations, and I want to essentially uh, clear up that miscommunication between the different organizations so that they can be on the same page and challenge and essentially channeling all the resources fairly and justly, not just to returning citizens, but let's say um, to the, pe the people who are afraid of returning citizens. And what I mean by afraid of returning citizens, um, I'll bring a specific examples. No re-entry program would like to deal with sex offenders. Nobody would like, for example, deal with sex offenders. Now, I know it's a, like a crime and it's like horrible and everything else, but if a person already pays like, let's say 30 years uh, or whatever, how many years, and they already throw so many laws on top of their head, if the idea was to have a game, a play, a situation, how does this, let's say, individual gets to be involved in all of this? Is this all for really the public or is this really for the returning citizen? The public have an idea that this person should be an outcast and they should be forever doomed. And this person thinks that probably they're biased toward his own means. And so I think there should be this sort of like just setting where when all, I want to say, organizations are on the table and they essentially, I don't want to say, uh, reach consensus on who and how to deal with, uh, let's say, uh, um, um, tough situations like sex offenders or like those people should get priority, let's say in housing uh, that are, let's say, 
uh, not not close to schools because people, let's say, who doesn't have an issue finding a housing like anywhere in Detroit because of the the type of um, uh, the the lack of restrict, restrictions on them. Anyway, it's just how to deal with the different types of returning citizens with the organizations that are already in there. So I'm connecting a network between A, uh, the organizations among themselves, the returning citizens among themselves, and an overall network among the whole thing between everyone. That's what I think the game should be about. So know me should be about not just returning citizens but the organizations themselves or the communities or whatever and how they connect play did i lose you there am i no, not making lose me. Uh, just like uh i think i mean you're setting yourself up for a a really big challenge in some ways. So like, I sort of feel like the personal perspective of returning is, is really important to what you've been doing. And when you start to talk about like fixing or, or uh, creating a way for these organizations to interface and be on the same page, that is sort of like a separate task. Uh, and trying to accomplish both like uh, understanding and developing a process in which, let's say, the public can understand the perspective of, of returning is one thing. Uh, creating a forum for these various groups to interface is another thing. Um, and I think trying to respond to both those things is challenging and when you talk about like framing it around the idea of no me i think that's interesting like but that's more of to me the individual perspective of returning and the experiences one faces through returning it just seems like like i think there's value in addressing the issues related to these groups ability to um uh be on the same page but it's almost, I, I sort of feel like the idea that they're gonna have consensus in some way seems almost like an impossible task. And so I guess it's not clear to me how they're not on the same page. Like, there's always gonna be differences of opinion and they, they sort of, I would imagine, and maybe I'm wrong, that they're oriented in the right direction together, like in the sense that they're there to su um, support this idea of finding ways for people to re-enter into society. Um, but getting them on the same page, I'm not sure. I think there's something probably to the idea that they could work together and support each other, particularly if they these, these various programs provide different aspects of returning, if some are related to jobs and some are related to housing, or some are related to counseling in some way. Some may have all three of those things together. Um, I guess that that's almost a, a separate task, I guess. I'm not sure. And I sort of understand it through the lens of the diagramming you've been doing in terms of like building these, these kind of inner networks with people that are returning and then, um, having this kind of macro level network idea as well for that. Uh, so maybe I should ask you, what is the scale of my project besides being public engaging and it's going to be a game design and it's going to be about thinking about the rules or the systems. What is the scale? Like what, it, who is my audience? Really my question for you. Well, I mean, you, you, that's a question for you. So like what, who is the audience? If I was to ask that and like, if you were able to respond in one sentence, like who is the audience of the work that you're doing? It can be multiple. Well, there's, you can answer a few ways, but I would select an audience to bring focus to the way you approach the game. And the audience itself will be a way to um, think about scale. Um, I sort of think it's when it comes to scale, I sort of think it's the scale of, I'll say like everyday experience. So that's like 
home, going to shop for things, like buy groceries, going to work, uh, going to play, like doing those activities is the scale of the work. And however that is spatially manifest would be the scale of the way you think about your design system response. Does that make sense? So like, it's sort of like, I feel like you're relying in, on your experiences or the, um, what is lacking in these organizations and their ability to relate, to build an argument, which could be, it's very specific to these organizations uh, and not specific to the experience of returning. And they're certainly related, I understand that. But just to simplify as a starting point, I think it's important to be able to frame very specifically, like you said, who the audience is. In some ways it's like, you sort of need to select that. But when you say like a concept like know me, I think that's really interesting. Um, it, to me, it, it's the perspective of an individual returning. And what, how, what returning means. And so like that sort of means how they build a peer network or support network in the way that you diagrammed previously. And then also how they negotiate these constraints of the city that are affected or afflicted upon them. Um, yeah, I think I, I understand what you just said. Um, and I exactly did the opposite what the assignment said which is to uh have a specific not to have a design a specific response but to systemize a response or in a way i don't know like open up an opportunity it's it's almost like collect it, we're still researching and collecting data but we're doing it with a new tool and okay Um, well, I mean, admittedly, it's a little hard because I haven't never received your atlas, so I can't really respond to that because I can point to other student projects and say how they're specifically designing responses to the research they've done. So it's not, I don't want to say in some ways it, yes, it is continuing to research, but it isn't just research. It's responding to the research you've developed in a way that you're designing a system response. Um, and so like, if you look at what like Alyssa and Simon are doing, they're designing basically like a food insecurity infrastructure. They've mapped out the system of food insecurity and they're, they're developing a kind of process of addressing that. Um, like, well, like what I mean, a process of addressing uh, the food so insecurity. The, the process, process of addressing is, yeah, so they're essentially creating, and actually Trevor and Austin are doing something similar. They're creating a, a kind of parallel or hypothetical urban environment that, that contains all of um, the basic elements related to kind of food systems, and then also basic urban uh, kind of functionality. And part of the the design process of the design system will be about kind of seeing that hypothetical city and seeing opportunities to overlay food need with kind of um, typological urban conditions. And so that they can, you can reconstruct relationships based on conventions, like conventional urban systems with the need of food insecurity. And um, they have a kind of process outlined for that system which is about like understanding where food's produced understanding where how food is distributed understanding how food is accessed and prepared and also how that has an educational component and then how the byproducts of that and then how that cycles back into the system all right um no, this is really helpful um so I mean, I'll keep, so Trevor and Austin, not Trevor and Austin, uh, yeah, Trevor and Austin, they're focused on um, infrastructure and the idea of off-grid 
and create an off-grid city. So they yeah. are creating a hypothetical city um, too. And basically that can, the hypothetical city is gonna represent the kind of broad history of urban development within the United States. It's gonna have uh, a conventionally designed centralized infrastructural system. It's gonna, part, the game will be, it breaks down how do, and then the questions are, how do various perspectives, and they're gonna have the perspective of an economist, the perspective of a politician, perspective of an everyday citizen, how do they work together to rebuild the infrastructure in a decentralized off-grid fashion? And, like, and so like that is gonna produce solutions, right? They're gonna produce solutions through that system. It's not yeah. going to prescribe a specific solution, but they're 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 essentially equipping, creating people, equipping people with the tools to renegotiate how infrastructure works within the city. Based on a what if scenario, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying a what if scenario right here. What if the constituencies of the for uh, returning citizen programs, reentry programs, collaborate? They bring their resources together. Uh, they have a system of how to identify returning citizens, how to identify the grants that are permitted for some of them, and how to essentially map out this web of who gets what, when, and how. And I create a game that essentially, based on that know me, that account, you get to be connected to this one, I want to say, uh, uh, like, uh, inclusive um, organization that connects you to what you actually need instead of having so many opportunities and home, having so many types and they all get lost and nobody gets connected to what they need. That's what I'm saying is that there should be harmony between the organizations and there should be an identification of, of, the, of the cases with this app. And it really could be just like a phone app or it really, it could be like a phone app, really nothing more, nothing less, but, under making this scenario based on existing context is interesting just like how let's say uh trevor and austin are doing i'm saying let's pretend and i know it's hard but let's pretend um uh these people set their differences aside whether it's uh fame power money whatever it is they set it all aside and this they create this um uh, I want to say larger network that brings everybody in and not leave anybody out. And they, they take their opportunities. And this is what I've seen from the packets is that there are so many, uh, like Detroit task force has, let's say so many opportunities that are, I want to say even like specific to some people and during some times and, uh, uh, they don't know who to give it to. They don't even know how to connect with a returning citizen. And now, how do I know that? That's what I'm from like an inter a long interview. They're like, uh, we don't know. How there are so many types of uh, uh, returning citizens. We can't really deal with them because we don't know how, like what's their situations. And so, um, and they, we, they don't have all the resources either. And so would it be kind of, pointless to show that if, if all organizations merged and, and sorted their resources like in a like a priorities process maybe or process of priorities like who gets who uh, who gets what first and then identifying who is on the other end what do you think about that idea it's very uh, I want to say that's what I was kind of going off of. Um, well, I was actually trying to do it for real, but if it's metaphorically speaking, I could say metaphorically or the theoretically, if this gets to be inserted and they, they gave me all the data, they gave me all the, I want to say the resources and they just don't want to talk to each other. And that's a different story. But they invited me to their events, their public events, they told me you can show up and and I can bring this game like essentially um, whether it's an app or almost like a I don't want to say a survey but like this profile that you set up in your phone and 
you essentially create an account and you get to essentially, I don't want to say like talk to this um, fake organizations, but have this or like app based product where you sign up, whatever you need, they'll see if they have an availability. They'll also connect you with other people who are in there who might need help if you have found help. So it's also not just registration of self, it's registration of, of other opportunities, amenities that a person has. And that's why I noticed that everyone has their own, I wanna say ups and downs. So it's like, again, it's like a, a creating this public engagement tool with a what of scenarios, but really not what of scenarios. What are, like, what are the what of scenarios? Like, I guess I, why do you why are you trying to? What is drawing you to the, the this idea of the solution being that merging all? I mean, I understand sort of merging all these organizations together will solve the problem. Okay, so. It's not like it's Mercedes or BMW where it's two different things, right? It's they're they're naming themselves and they're creating more work from themselves and they're being inefficient and the system is like every interview I've had with parolee, probation, uh, no, I mean like sorry, parolee or 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 uh, like an ex-con, they said. The reentry program should have been from the get go in prison, and honestly, I kind of agree. Like yeah. prison, kind of. All right, let me let me stop you there. Let me hang on. So I think you, I think you're you're not helping yourself out when you, and I think there's there's value in doing this, and I understand why. But when you talk about all these organizations, that that being the setup for what you're doing is just confusing, and it just leads a lot more questions. Not that you won't talk about it. I think it's important, but I think. Just simply saying, creating a support network to transition from being within jail to coming and re-entering into society and creating this transition process is like the project. And that may involve merging these organizations. You talk about that as a secondary thing because you did that through your research. You did that through all the engagement you're about to articulate. Uh, and I don't think it's, I don't think, I sort of don't think the project is like, you designing how like these organizations merge together you sort of assume that like you assume that there's a, this is a network that you're building and it's the way you i would frame it is like i'm uh proposing a kind of a strengthened network of transition and this transition involves all these aspects of returning into society like health education access to technology and so starting from there is much stronger and clearer yeah. than starting from here's all these organizations i'm going to merge them and this is what it's you're like doing. you're you're it's like you're yeah. coming in with a solution without helping us understand what the problem is in really yeah. simple yeah. clear brief language <laughs> and then i think once you have that set up without talking about the research you can like in terms of how people interact with what you're doing and what you're researching you can allow people, I'm recording this by the way, um, to ask that question, like, how do you know this? How do you know that this network's important? You, and then you can say, well, I, I researched all these organizations and I think that a solution is not merging them together, but connecting them. And, here, and then through this kind of network of connections, this is how I see that process taking place. But it's like you're jumping into the detail of the solution before you're helping us understand what the problem is. Yeah. And then I think, I sort of think, I think it gets interesting when you're able to talk about the network as something that builds peer relationships amongst people returning. So like, I'm a returning citizen, I'm a returning citizen, they're connected through this network. But then I sort of, I mean, this is where you have to, I guess, take a stance or, or talk to us about how you envision this based on your research. Like, there's a kind of transition period where like, you're, you have this network of relationships. You all just got out of jail, essentially. Or there's people that actually have re-entered into society. But there's a kind of like gradation, potentially, that happens where your identity is no longer I've returned from jail, like or I just returned. And now, like 10 years later, I'm a full functioning 
member of society, you've had a job for 10 years, like how, like what's that identity look like? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, there's this, and maybe that's always a part of you, but the, there's this kind of transition. And I think mapping that transition is, uh, will be crucial and interesting to the, the network that you build. So it's not only connecting, I'd say people through these groups, but it's creating kind of moments and experience and spaces even of transition into back into society. And so there's, there's a bit of a timeline involved and maybe you just take like, there's, that's part of the what if scenario, like I've returned and maybe you just do this very simply. I become part of this network and I have access to these resources and I gradually over 10 years become you know, a fully invested member, a contributing member of society, but I'm still connected to the network. And because I'm, it's 10 years out, I'm a super valuable network, a member within the network because I have all these life experiences outside to contribute. Okay. And maybe those are things are you, you've assumed so far, but I think just making that really clear and articulating that will be um, essential. And that's where I think you, that's where I begin to understand what you're saying or where you're going with this in terms of building that network um, and building those experiences in those spaces of transition and those moments and experiences of transition. Strengthening the transitioning program. Yeah, or yeah. just don't even think of it as a program, just think of it transition experience. Like, yeah. like when it's a program, it makes it like, it preempts it as a kind of, pre-packaged solution and yeah. it's not that you're 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 describing a, a kind of an experience or a phenomenon and yes it may result in the form it may take is a program but it's not an explicit program yeah and so maybe and this is one, one of my, my faults mike uh, two faults i jump to details and uh, um I guess three faults, I forget a lot of things, but no. Uh, 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 no, I was about to say, um, I forgot, but it's okay. Um, this is very interesting. You gave me um, clarity and I thank you for that and a lot of time to think about this. And, oh, no. I don't deal with very well with unknowns. And so yeah. what you're telling me is map this whole timeline. And to me, that's very scary because I'm projecting it off of nothing or maybe investigations. But well, the research you've done, you've been researching this all semester. So you have yeah. knowledge. Okay. Knowledge, but can all the knowledge be coming out of, let's say, I mean, it's coming from different sources, but okay, that's it. Think about it, think of it this way. Yeah, like part the ambition at this studio is to say that, let's say you're an architect, you're gonna be an architect, and I want you to design a halfway house, right? A halfway house is a transitional housing. And so I, I want to, as a design studio, I want to equip you guys with the ability to kind of understand what would it mean to research the needs for a halfway house. And the thing I sort of, my critique is that the traditional way of doing that for an architect is to like, you know, go to Google or talk to these institutional programs, right? And get kind of second, third, tertiary information and rely on this kind of uh, a narrative conception that you're still pre-packaging your bias in into designing this halfway house. But if you, you through this studio, you're designing a process in which you can, you're researching directly by simulating the experience while also talking to these organizations while also thinking about the bigger picture and responding in a way that thinks of design as a participatory process, that you are creating a more meaningful, relevant and critical understanding of what it means to think about the design in this instance of a halfway house. Well put. Yeah, that's what I do. That's great. So think about feedback loops. Yes. And touch them back, touch them back with my resources to validate some of my, uh, uh, not design decisions, but I don't know, research design decisions. Sure. <laughs> um, this is interesting. Thank you. 
Yeah. Um, I'll watch the recording and um, have a beautiful weekend. All right. You too. By the way, what are you doing Monday at 12? Uh, I don't know. Working. Uh, uh, oh, right. Uh, there is um, an opening at uh, Cocoon. It's uh, East Grand Boulevard by Goodwill, by Vanguard. It's um, North End uh, off of uh i-75 or woodward i don't know if you're familiar with that area i'm anyway, familiar with the area yeah uh, what's that called cocoon cocoon and yeah what is it? uh cocoon detroit it's a maker uh no no it's a collaborative space kind of like we work it's yeah. owned by uh, steve harris um uh um the guy owns like a construction company and works um with Vanguard tightly, and uh, he used to be a uh, Lawrence Tech alum as well. So okay. anyway, I'm going I'm there for two send reasons. Me a link. Yeah, I'll send you a link. Uh, I'm going there because um, I made. Uh, hopefully, he will be completing a site model for his um, uh, for his. Uh, I don't know, like furniture. It's almost like a furniture piece. But anyway, um, I just am inviting you, or I'll send you a link about it. And it's Monday, so I'll hopefully see you. All right, send me a link, yeah. I think I'll be able to check it out. It's in the north end at East Grand Boulevard. Yes, 2777. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks. I'll see you. Yep.